Conor McGregor is undeniably one of the biggest draws in MMA history. And with the talk recently of him potentially usurping Justin Gaethje or going up to fight Usman, have had people questioning the matchmaking in the UFC. Dana White spoke to Daniel Cormier on his YouTube channel and said this, and quote, when we started this thing and this guy was on his rise, and believe me, I've dealt with a effing thousand fighters. Oh, this isn't the fight for me at this time, and this isn't that, and this isn't this, and this effing kid, we've been in a house that he was renting. I think it was when Jose Aldo pulled out of his 2015 bout. This is what he said to us. I don't give a F who you get. I'm going to work out. When you figure it out, call me and let me know. And then the Nate Diaz fight, another fight fell out for him, he said. Well, let's fight Diaz. Well, do you want to do? No, I don't want it at catchweight. If I don't fight him at this weight, it doesn't matter. It's BS if I don't fight him at his weight. Connor has been that guy since the day he walked into this effing company, White added. So for anybody to point the finger and say, oh, this guy's getting special treatment? Because this guy's special. This guy's effing special. You know how many fighters I've effing dealt with that'll talk to me about this isn't good for my brand, I'm not fighting my friends. McGregor, at 33 years old, is currently sidelined with a broken leg and has lost three of his last four fights. As of recording this, he is number nine in the UFC lightweight rankings and is expected to return to the octagon by mid-2022 at the earliest. Charles Oliveira's recent comments about Justin Gaethje appear to have touched a nerve. Oliveira recently was on MMA Fighting's Chococao Franca podcast and had this to say. The guy, Justin Gaethje, is talking a bunch of crap the entire time and when we meet face to face, he says he has all the respect for me and what I do and two minutes later he's saying he'll break my face and saying a bunch of stuff. Oliveira said of Gaethje following their friendly backstage encounter at UFC 269. These guys make things up and try to sell fights with something they are not. If you're a humble guy, if you're a respectful guy, you have to sell the fight that way. If you're a guy that talks crap, you have to sell the fight talking crap the entire time. To my face and behind my back. Gaethje has since responded on Twitter explaining that he can respect Oliveira while at the same time wanting to quote, break his face, end quote, when they inevitably clash inside the octagon. Quote, Charles de Bronx, it's called respect you fool and we're in the breaking faces business. My respect that night was just as real as my intention to take everything from you and your country, Gaethje said. Gaethje is expected to challenge Oliveira for the lightweight title next year, although the latter would prefer to fight Conor McGregor in May. Khabib Nurmagomedov thinks we may have seen the last of Dustin Poirier following his title defeat to Charles Oliveira at UFC 269. Speaking at a press conference in Russia, Khabib said, After the fight, he said he needs to think, does he need it at all? If such thoughts came to his mind, it means he will win, but he will win and lose. He will not go to the end when it will be necessary. Sometimes you look at the athlete and you see how fast he changes. I say it to my close friends, while there is a time you should stay active and keep fighting, if this switch clicks once, he will never go back. I think his switch clicked. He continued, quote, The time comes. There was Frankie Edgar, Benson Henderson, Pettis before me. Then Connor. No one stayed. Everyone left. Now it is Charles' time. Charles came. Now it is the time of Islam, Benil, Justin Gaethje, Charles Oliveira. They will fight now. They will leave too. Others will come. No one can control this and no one will be able to stop this. Time runs out. I think everything is simple. Charles Oliveira was better, choked, and left. Later, another one will come and beat him. He will go out. Then we will talk about another one. It is such a carousel that will never be stopped. In an interview recently with SureDog, light heavyweight champion Glover Teixeira says he wants King Mo in his camp for Yuri Prochaska. Mohamed Lawal has a knockout win over Prochaska back in December of 2015. Teixeira wants to know exactly what holes King Mo took advantage of back in the day. In the interview with SureDog, Teixeira says, end quote, I talked with Mo because Prohaska was a backup for the fight. Mo called me, we talked a little bit about it. Maybe I'll bring Mo to my camp, you know? It will be a good possibility. I'm good friends with Mo. Not just that, Yuri is a very awkward striker, very fast with his movements, very good technique, but also he opens up a lot, and I think that's how King Mo got him. He comes crazy like that. He also leaves himself open for a good punch to connect. Ever since his loss to Mohamed Lawal, which took place at the Ryzen Heavyweight Grand Prix Finals, 
Prohaska was able to even the score in April 2019 at Ryzen 15, where he scored a TKO victory over King Mo. Although yet not confirmed, Teixeira is rumored to have his first title defense against Prohaska at UFC 274 on May 7th in Rio de Janeiro. In a report from The Mirror, they say that Jake Paul might be taking a seven month hiatus from the sport of boxing. The reason for this, apart from a supposedly much needed vacation, Paul has apparently set his sights on promoting a boxing super fight between undisputed lightweight world champion Katie Taylor and WBC, WBO, and IBO featherweight champion Amanda Serrano. Serrano, who is 42 and 1, signed with Jake Paul's most valuable promotions company earlier this year and has competed as the featured co main event to both Paul's bouts against Tyron Woodley. It's so satisfying because she deserves the money and, uh, and the notoriety more than I do. She's put in thousands and hundreds of hours in the gym and she deserves the big payday that she's going to get and she deserves to you know be able to retire from boxing and uh that's, not work again yeah not work again and that unfortunately hasn't been the case for for women's boxing they've been underpaid and taken advantage of and yeah the, uh, it's an amazing accomplishment for me to be able to help her and she's such an awesome person like such an awesome person <laughs> Jake Paul said at the post-fight press conference for Tyron Woodley vs. Jake Paul 2. Matchroom chairman Eddie Hearn spoke to The Mirror back in November about negotiations for a fight with Serrano, making it clear that he expects the booking fight to be a fairly smooth process. She'll make what she needs to make, Hearn said of Serrano. They've made a request for a purse for that fight and I'm confident that we can get there. At the moment it sounds like both sides are aiming for the bout to take place in April or May of 2022. Last, we have a few big fights that were announced for the UFC, Bellator, Ryzen, etc. We have Marlon Marais versus Song Yadong on tap. That will be March 12th, UFC Fight Night. We also have for Bellator, Neiman Gracie versus Logan Storley at Welterweight, February 19th. And we have Ryzen special standing bout rules, Tension Nasukawa versus Takanori Gomi. We'll see you tomorrow with more MMA news, guys. Uh, like, follow, and subscribe. Uh, let us know what you'd like to see more of, and uh, have a beautiful day.